Okay, so a quick run through of all of the useful things that get reabsorbed in the proximal convoluted tubule of the kidney. So let's start with having a look at um, the nephron, the functional unit of the kidney. So remember we have a efferent, afferent arterial coming in of a large diameter, generates hydrostatic pressure on the glomerular capillaries, then we've got an efferent arterial going out. You've got a basement membrane, which is the physical filter between the glomerulus and the renal capsule, which is this often called the Bohm's capsule, which is going to be collecting the filtrate. And everything that can get squeezed through there is anything that's small enough to go through the pores in the basement membrane. And the pores in the basement membrane allow through anything with a relative molecular mass of less than 68,000. So that's anything that's non-cellular and um, anything that's so things like urea and um, amino acids and glucose and fructose and salts and water but all of the cellular components and the big plasma proteins will stay in here so we squeezed loads of useful stuff into the filtrate we've squeezed the nasty stuff we want to get rid of into the filtrate we've also squeezed loads of useful stuff now the story of the proximal convoluted tubule is about how you recover the useful things that are in the filtrate um, before it goes down the ureter into your bladder and you urinate it out. So the proximal convoluted tubule is all about the recovery of the um, good things that have been squeezed out in the 20% of the plasma that's been pushed out. Now. Where this happens is in these cells um, of the proximal convoluted tubule. So here we've got what's called the lumen, um, which is the hole that um, the filtrate goes down. So the filtrate is going to have in here, it's going to have loads of water, it's going to have urea, it's going to have sodium, it's going to have chloride, it's going to have potassium, it's going to have um, phosphates, it's going to have amino acids and principally and it's going to have the loads of glucose because obviously glucose is going around in your plasma now we're going to talk briefly about this we're going to have a chat about the glucose concentration and i'll just mention a few numbers if we consider the glomerular filtrate coming in uh, and then obviously glomerulus going out and afferent arterial and efferent arterial and I am a bit obsessed with this basement membrane and then obviously renal capsule. Now this point is missed by some students. So if we have a glucose concentration of say 5 coming in, then the glucose concentration in, in the glomerulus is going to be 5. The glucose concentration in the efferent arterial leaving is also going to be 5. Because this is not a filter, the barrier between um, here, between the basement membrane is only a filter to things which are larger than the holes in the filter. But the filter's holes are smaller, uh, sorry, are larger than glucose. So glucose will go straight through. So the concentration of glucose in the filtrate will be the same as the concentration of glucose inside the glomerulus because this is not a barrier to it. So the basement membrane is not a barrier. In terms of the volumes that go through, 100% comes in, 80% leaves through the afferent, efferent arterial, and 20% of the plasma gets squeezed through. It gets, get, it gets squeezed through the basement membrane that 20% and everything that it contains, so the glucose, the urea, the salts, the um, chlorides, etc. Right, this matters that the glucose concentration here will be the same as the glucose concentration here, and also the salt concentration and the, everything else. The, as an addendum, the osmotic potential here is actually, uh, that is in the um, efferent arterial and in the glomerulus the osmotic concentration is actually more negative than it is here because the plasma proteins which are too big to get across the membrane remain in here 
and that helps to lower the water potential. So there's actually a water potential gradient going this way, which is overcome by the hydrostatic pressure caused by the differences between the efferent and the afferent arteriole, which is forcing fluid out. So the net filtration pressure is to push the, um, the plasma and its contents out, although the hydrostatic pressure is to go obviously back in this way. Right, I've talked about that for a bit too long, but there we go. Let's go down here. So what's happening here is that we have, in this lumen, we have everything that we've squeezed out um, from the glomerulus into the renal capsule. The next story is how do you recover the things you want and how do you not take back the things you want to get rid of. So this is a um, proximal convoluted tubule cell. So here we have um, microvilli to increase the surface area. So they have a bigger surface area for more facilitated diffusion proteins to sit on it. At the back we have a folded basal membrane to increase the surface area. This goes on to a chunk of the efferent arteriole. So this is the arteriole which is then wrapped throughout the um, uh, proximal convoluted tubule and this is helping to collect the products, the things you need to recover. Now in here we've also got mitochondria and these mitochondria are producing loads of ATP from aerobic respiration. Now the purpose of those, those the reason there's so many mitochondria is because we have at the back we have a active transport pump. Now this pump is going to pump particular ions in and particular ions out. And the particular ions it's going to pump out is sodium. Now it's pumping the sodiums out which means it's using the energy from the ATP and it's breaking down to produce ADP. Obviously this is going back to the mitochondria and being turned into more ATP and we're using this to pump sodiums out and you're pumping them from a lower concentration to a higher concentration in the efferent arteria. Now that's being balanced by potassiums coming in from a lower concentration to a higher concentration, but those potassiums then flow straight out again. <coughs> and the reason why the potassiums are doing it is because it helps to balance the charge. But this is not an important detail at the moment. So principally we're pumping the sodiums out against their concentration gradient. Now, remember that the we pump the sodiums out, we now have a gradient of sodiums wanting to come in because the sodium concentration here is going to be higher than the sodium concentration inside because we've actively pumped them out. And remember that the sodium and the glucose concentration in the filtrate is going to be the same as the sodium and the glucose concentration in the efferent arteriole because it's the same plasma in both. So that the concentration of glucose here will be the same as the concentration of glucose here and the concentration of sodium will be the same as the concentration of sodium here because it's the same plasma. Right, how does the sodium get in? Well the sodium comes in through a co-transport protein which is embedded in the membrane. Now <coughs> the sodium will bind and will be moved down its concentration gradient from high to low concentration and that concentration gradient has been achieved through actively pumping them out. But this is a co-transport pump and this co-transport pump has two binding sites and the other binding site is for the other thing that you want to pump in. And in this case, and the most often quoted, is glucose. And the glucose is going to move 
from a lower concentration to a higher concentration inside. So you're exploiting the sodium gradient to power the intake of the glucoses. You've actively pumped the sodiums out from a low to a higher concentration. And that's given you a concentration gradient from the lumen into the cell of the proximal convoluted tubule from a high to a low concentration. You're exploiting that gradient by saying, look, you can come in from a high to a low, but only if you bring a glucose from a low to a high. The glucose is having come in from a lower to a higher concentration. There is then a gradient of high to outside into the back into the efferent arteriole of high into a lower concentration there. So the glucoses flow out through another facilitated diffusion um, transport protein which takes them out down the concentration gradient from high to lower. So they've gone from low to a higher concentration exploiting the sodium gradient and then from a high to a lower concentration in the efferent arterial just down their concentration gradient. Now the beauty of this is it's not only sodium that is not only glucose that is taken in by the sodium co-transport mechanism it's also other ions so if I give you another color so here we have is another co-transport pump uh, this is also going to take sodiums in and the sodium is going to come in down the concentration gradient from a high to a low but for instance this might have a binding site for glycine an amino acid and the glycines would again move inside the cell of the proximal convoluted tubule and then would diffuse out back into the um, efferent arterial. Now, when you're actively moving in all of these uh, dissolved solutes, so the glucose, the amino acids, etc., what you're also doing is you're lowering the water potential inside the um, proximal convoluted tubule cell so the psi s of the proximal convoluted tube cell is going to become very negative. This is going to give you a big water potential gradient between um, the lumen and the inside of the proximal convoluted tubule. So water is going to come pouring in through aquaporins. <coughs> and because there's a more negative water potential because of all the solutes you pumped in. That water is then going to keep flowing and flow out through aquaporins back into the um, blood vessels because the blood vessels have a pretty negative water potential because they have those dissolved plasma proteins that couldn't go through the basement membrane. So by the end of the proximal convoluted tubule, as long as you're not a diabetic and suffering from bursts of high, blood, high glucose level, at the end of the proximal convoluted tubule here, you should have absorbed all of the glucose and the amino acids and 80% of the water. The rest of the story is about the descending limb of the loop of Henle, the ascending loop of the Henle, which generate the iron gradient, which you used for osmoregulation, and then the, the hormone, antidiuretic hormone, which is going to affect the permeability of the distal convoluted tubule and then the collecting duct. But that can be left for another video. Okay, I hope this made sense. Bye.